today, inspected the materials at the ANEC head office in Akuredo State Capital. ANEC Commissioner Supervising Undo Oyo Anosho State, Professor Kunla Jai, along with other key officers of the Commission, were present at the venue. The by-election comes up this Saturday. Under State Governor Lucky Ahidatwa says his passion for promotion of tertiary education in the state is unwavering. Governor Ahidatwa, who played host to the governing councils of University of Medical Sciences Undo, Olusha Gwangabu University of Science and Technology Okitukupa, and Adekunle Ajashi University at Kumba Koko at his office in Akure, charged the tertiary institutions to explore other ways of creating wealth towards sustainability. Government House correspondent Wahab Bankole reports that the universities also commiserated with Governor Aedatua and the people of the state over the demise of former Governor Uluwarutimi Akeridemu, the report. The University of Medical Sciences, Undo, was led to the governor's office by its pro-chancellor and chairman of the governing council, Professor Ayodele Arujolu, who commiserated with the governor and people of the state over the passing of former governor Uluwaruti Miyakiri Dulu and also congratulated Aida Chiwa on his elevation as governor. While assuring him of the university's support, the pro-chancellor appreciated the governor for his recent intervention in the university. We are very grateful that you have recently reduced the sum of the 250 million for our, our pharmacy faculty. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Adesha Gunfatusi, stressed the need for the university to continue to benefit from the support of TED Fund. When we came in two years back, we were only permitted to admit 75 nursing students. By last year, we made it to 150. By this January, then we approved one to take in 200. And we feel that that is not just only a testimony to the university, but a testimony to the commitment of the government to support the university. Governor Loki Aida Chiwa, who appreciated the visit, eulogized his late boss with assurance that his legacies will be sustained. He assured the University of Government support, especially towards achieving the Senate building project. The much you enjoy from the late governor as a leader of the state and government at the time, even now that I've assumed that same position, you will get same <coughs> if not more support. <clears throat> the testimony to that was the approval of the 250 million that was given to support the pharmacy faculty of the institution. The governor also had an audience, the governing council of Olushegun Agagu University of Science and Technology, led by chairman of the governing council, Professor Akimbo Adeshomoju, who commiserated with the governor and congratulated him on his new position. He highlighted some of the challenges facing the institution, including power supply and hostel facility. School of Science. Complex. It is a flagship school in that university. It has five departments. It's all here. Also, been abandoned since 2010. It's something beyond the capacity of council to handle. Luckily, in the budget for 2024, you, you have kindly you have approved some funds for that project. According to him, the university is committed to assisting the state in promoting some sectors of the economy, including agriculture and marine. Governor Aida Tiwa appreciated the visit and described the death of his former boss as a colossal loss, noting that he will be sorely missed. The governor reaffirmed his commitment to making tertiary education better in the state. And whatever we can also do. Uh, to influence support from outside. It's also tell what we do also. And for you to know, we are giving two slots from TED Fund. And also tell you one of our nominees. The visits were handed off 
when the Governor Council of the Adekunle Ajashin University at Mbakoko, led by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Olubenga Ige, was received by Governor Aida Chiwa. The committee returned with the Governor and wished him well as the pilot's affairs of the state. From all indications and from available records, in this short period of time, we have demonstrated commitment to the improvement of higher education in our state. I want to salute you. I want to humbly request that we are also being hold 2017 January subvention. Governor Aida Tiwa thanked the team and promised government's assistance towards solving the challenges facing the institution while noting the impactful life of his late boss. The former governor did a lot also for the university. And we have resolved that we will continue in the same style. <laughs> we strive to ensure that uh, we have a very good uh, budget performance. And what you are able to access to, we help uh, performance. So, We'll be willing if we have the resources. So it's not something you have to beg for. It is what we should do you know, as a system. The governor charged the tertiary institutions to explore other ways of creating wealth towards sustainability. Wahab Bankoli, OSR News. Understate Governor Lucky Aida Tua, who played host to youth leaders of the ruling All Progressives Congress APC in the 18 local government areas of the state, described them as the engine room of any productive economy. The governor promised to always prioritize and sustain efforts that promote youth development at all levels. Government House correspondent Wahab Bankale again completes the story. The Koko Conference Hall of the Governor's Office in Akure played host to APC youth leaders from the 18 local government areas of Ondo State as they identified with Governor Loki Aedachiwa. Led by Mr. Oriade Abiodun, the youths who expressed their support for the Aedachiwa administration called for increased participation. We need a youthful, a partisan, a progressive commissioner for youth transport. We need a politician that will understand the pain of the youth of the party. We need a politician that will understand what sportsmanship is. I've made mention of youth and sports. Sunshine Star shall return to, the, to, the, to these glorious days. Amen. Governor Loki Aida Chiwa expressed gratitude to them for identifying with his administration and promised to sustain efforts at promoting their welfare. Any nation, not just political party, that doesn't give the youth their place, that nation will not, will not develop, will not move far, will not achieve much. The engine room of any country is the youth. If you want to go to war, it is the youth who recruit to the army, to the military, not the old men. The workforce, the youth, they are the ones that have the strength to work. So the youth occupy strategic position in many organizations, in many states, in many nations. Aida Tiwa called for unity among the youth to honor late Governor Oluwaruti Miyakere Dolu, whom he described as a hero and visionary leader whose legacies will endure in the annals of the state. You want to talk about rules? They are constructed. It was that there's no government on those that have constructed the number of kilometers that his administration constructed within the seven years that he was able to rule us as government. You are a flyover to remove accidents on the road. To Kalabujuto, the Kare. Yes, yes, yes. 
because we, we want a situation where we have past governors, like other states, and we celebrate We will do it together. So come in the first of February. The governor urged the youth leaders to exhibit leadership and capacity in their respective worlds while also aligning with the goals of his administration to drive grassroots development. Wahab Bankoli, OSRC News. So you win big glow, but I get it ten times here, right? I, I told you. Now I'll go ten.
Pakistan former Prime Minister Imer Khan has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for leaking state secrets, the harshest sentence the cricket superstar has received yet. It comes days before general election. The special court found Khan guilty of making public the content of a secret cable from Pakistan ambassador in Washington to the Islamabad government according to his party. Former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Quresh was also sentenced to 10 years in the same case. Khan's party plans to challenge the ruling, while officials with Khan's Peter party have called for calm. At least four activists were arrested out of Karachi court on Tuesday. A bomb in Pakistan Balochistan region killed three PTA members, the party said, hours after Khan was sentenced. The former Prime Minister has been in jail since last August. That's when Khan was sentenced to three years in jail in a corruption case. He's been fighting dozens of cases since he was ousted from power in a parliamentary no-confidence vote about two years ago. Akin Tunde, Akin Shimola, for SRC News. Hamas says it has received and was starting a new proposal for a ceasefire. Hamas says it has. received and was starting a new proposal for a ceasefire and the release of hostages in Gaza. Meditas provided the proposal to Hamas after talks with Israel in what appeared to be the most serious peace initiative for months. A senior Hamas official disclosed that the proposal involved a three-state choose during which the group would first release remaining civilians among hostages it captured on October 7th then soldiers and finally the bodies of hostages that were killed. The ceasefire proposal followed talks in Paris involving intelligence chief from Israel, the United States and Egypt with the Prime Minister of Qatar. In a mark of the seriousness of the negotiation, Ahmad chief Ismail Aniye said he was going to Cairo to discuss it, his first public trip there for more than a month. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu repeated his vow not to pull troops out of Gaza until total victory. I hear sayings about all kinds of deals, so I want to clarify. We will not end this war short of achieving all of its objectives. That means eliminating Hamas, returning all of our hostages, and ensuring that Gaza will no longer pose a threat to Israel. Hamas, whose fighters precipitated the war by storming into Israeli's town on October 7, killing 1,200 people and capturing 253 hostages, says it will release its remaining captives only as part of a wider deal to end the war permanently. Israel has killed more than 26,000 Palestinians so far in the war and more than 2 million people in the enclaves have been displaced. The fighting in Gaza has led to escalating elsewhere across the Middle East, including attacks on U.S. forces by armed groups allied to Iran. Yes. U.S. President Joe Biden said he had made up his mind on how to respond to a drone attack that killed U.S. service members in Jordan without elaborating. But the echoed comment from the U.S. officials who said the United States does not want a war with Iran. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. That's not what I'm looking for. I didn't care, Kola Oli, or SRC News.